got that out of the way. In an extracurricular, full of opportunities, incredible mentors, and amazing chocolate cake, Alice Polkrak, that's me, and my eight best friends try to do the impossible. Create a survival guide that will help you survive in 4-H. Now, before I get into the best of my tips, I'd like to give you a little review of your time and my time in 4-H. The first thing is finding out about 4-H and getting your start. For some of us, that may have been a family friend, or a sibling, or a parent, a flyer, an event. And for those of you that are newer to the program, it might have been our social media and our website. In any of those circumstances, the first thing you did was find your county program. And then, you got to know your educator. This is mine, Sandy Pardo, who happens to be here with us this morning. So I'd like it if we can all give Sandy a big welcome and say, Hi Sandy! Hi, Hi Sandy. Sandy! Sandy's been my educator for the past 10 years, and I'm so glad to have had her. She's been there for me the whole time, from my beginnings in embryology and cooking, to seeing me through my state council progress, writing one of my reference letters for it. Thank you, Sandy. And for all of the educators out there, thank you for everything you've done for all of your students. The main thing about your educator is they lead you along your path, and without them, you wouldn't know where to go next. And for when you first started out, this was important. It got you started in your first clubs, and it helped you find your passions. Along with that, your educators happen to have all the information of everything going on in your county. When you start out, it's a lot to keep track of. Personally, I like to use a calendar. When I first started out, my family used a desk calendar that we kept on our fridge. But a few years ago, once things started piling up, I joined a job, I was in school, and I was applying for state council. As you can see, I am a big fan of color coding. Learning to manage a calendar is one of the best skills I could have possibly earned for myself. It keeps track of all your assignments, the events, and everything you need to do, and it makes your life way easier. So when I first started out in 4-H, that was a skill I needed to pick up. Okay, secondly, after you got started in 4-H, the first thing was your first 4-H meeting. Do you remember how you felt? Were you excited? Nervous? Curious to see what was to come? I remember feeling all of those things, and even more. When I got there, my first thing was I wanted to make sure that I was on time for this event. It's not only something that's important to everyone in my family, but it's important to everyone in 4-H. It's one of those phrases that you learn pretty early on in the program. If you know it, feel free to say it with me. If you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, that's bad. The event's already started without you. People learn not to wait for people that are late. And being punctual in 4-H, it's one of those skills that sets the base for everything else you're gonna do. I wouldn't be on this stage today if I had missed my first 4-H meeting, if I had been late. It's those little things like that that set the reputation for what you have in the future. So you learn not to be like the white rabbit in Alice in Wonderland, and you learn to be on time. When I first arrived for my first 4-H meeting, there were two things I wanted to keep in mind. I wanted to come in with an open heart and an open mind. That way I could get the most out of this experience. Luckily, I had a little inside help from my best friend at the time, but she told me there was so much to offer out there, and I knew I didn't want to miss any of it. So by coming with an open mind and an open heart, I was not only open to trying new things and doing as much as I can, but I was willing to meet new people and put myself out there. It can be really scary at nine years old to do that, but if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have met some of my best friends in Sullivan County, and I wouldn't have met my state council members, and I wouldn't be here today without that. Finally, at the end of my first 4-H meeting, I remember being overwhelmed. There were all these papers, all these names to keep track of, all these events going on, but the one thing I learned from that was to stay organized. And it's a skill that helped me throughout the rest of my time in elementary and high school and going into college. It made me the valedictorian of my class, and it helped me keep a 4.0 during my first semester of college. And it's helped me be the president I am today of state council. Being organized is another one of those little skills that 4-H gives you. And it wouldn't help you in your future if you didn't figure it out pretty early on. So for those of you that still have time and may struggle with being organized, 
I would recommend you figure out a good system because it's really helped me. Okay, now we're starting to get into a little bit of my new information for you. Your first year of judging. I remember after my first year of 4-H, there was so much information I had learned, there were so many things I experienced that I wanted to share that with the judges. And I know in Sullivan County, what we do is, we have interviews during our roundup. We dress for success, and we prepare for that blue ribbon. That was the coveted thing. I wanted a blue ribbon so bad because I had heard so much about them, and I'm a girl. I like pretty ribbons, I like things like that, and I wanted to have one for myself. But I knew it would take hard work, and I also knew there's a caveat to this. Going for the blue ribbons and setting myself up for success is important, and I always think you should strive for your best. But sometimes, especially during tough times, it can be too much. The pressure can build, and you put too much doubt on yourself. Sometimes you end up walking away with a participation ribbon after an event you worked really hard on, and that can be disappointing. But at the end of the day, when it comes to these things, you have to remember, it's just a ribbon. It's not the most important thing. The most important thing is what you learned during your year in your project, and all the memories you made, all the people you met, and the skills you've learned. That's what's most important. But along with that, preparing for my interview, I came dressed for success, that way I would feel confident in my abilities, and it prepares you for the future. It's a great example of how 4-H cares about youth development and prepares you for your job in the future. Learning to dress for situations like SLC, interviews, project judging, it's all skills that you need for a successful future. And finally, arguably the most important thing with project judging is smiling and being passionate about what you do. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're the most creative person, the best writer, and you have the greatest project ever. That's great, and it'll definitely help you get a ribbon. But if you don't show to the judges that you care about your project and you're passionate about everything you do, they won't see that. It doesn't matter anything else besides presenting yourself to the judges and showing that this is the most important thing to you and showcasing everything you've learned throughout your year. So for those of you that still have time to continue doing this, I hope you show your judges every year the incredible things you've learned. Okay, getting the most out of 4-H. This is where the real stuff kicks in. My first tip for you is going to state events. Any event, actually. And everyone in this room is doing a great job so far. By coming here to SLC and showing up, you've shown that you're willing to try new things and put yourself out there, which can be tough. And I want you to keep doing that. Because going to events like this has been my favorite part of 4-H. It's been the best thing I've done, and it's the thing I look to forward to every single year. And it's been the best part of my state council term. Going to the events, even the ones I'm not as familiar with, provide a great opportunity to get to know the values of 4-H in person, right up close. Along with that, trying out different project areas is something you should do if you still have time left. When you get up here in your final years of 4-H, what you're going to regret most is the things you didn't do. You're not going to regret the year you tried out five projects and had to keep track of like 100 kids in your archery club for your secretary. No. What I regret most is the projects I didn't try because I was too scared. I'm a type of person that I like to do things I know how to do and that I can do well. But when it comes to things I'm not as familiar with, like line dancing, sewing, things like that, I lose confidence in myself, and I chose not to do them. And now, I wish I had. So for those of you out there, try projects you're not as familiar with. Push your comfort. It's the things, even if you're not good at it, or you don't like it, you at least took that chance and learned that it's not for you. And that's something new, at least. Thirdly, this is my favorite part state council, and the state project ambassador programs. I recommend that every single person tries to be a state project ambassador or on state council at some point. If I had known about the state project ambassador program sooner, it's an opportunity I 100% would have taken chance of. And I'm so proud of the work our spas do today. Seeing them at SLC Junior, taking that initiative and promoting 4-H, 
It was an incredible experience, and I'm so proud of all of them for doing that. And my state council team, I'm so proud of all of us for taking the time this year to do everything we've done. And to the next council team, I wish you the best of luck, and I'm so proud that you took this opportunity. And for those of you that have yet to try for state council or being a spa, take the time. The summer applications will be opening up for spas. Maybe take that chance. And state council will open up before you know it, and you never know. One day, you could end up being up here just like me. Those are the most important things I've learned at 4-H. But finally, there's one thing I want to leave you with. No matter what you do in 4-H, you're going to learn by doing. So I tell you to go out there and do as much as you can, and always try to make the best better. Thank you, Pennsylvania 4-H. It's been such an honor.